the two linesmen, Harry Amian and Dan Murphy. And here we go in Lake Placid with immediately the United States shooting it in. David A. Jensen shot it in. Soviets clear it out and controlling it is Swetlop number 14, checked from behind by Olchek. Now Team USA clear at the center, racing in is Olchek, beaten to the pocket, it's knocked away by Vazikov for the Soviets. Collision on the boards, and then it's dumped to center ice, taken there by Swetlop. He drops it back for Vazikov. Shot in for Swetlop. Number 14, Swetlop out in front, just cleared away at the last second by the United States. Dumped into the center ice area, LaFontaine, number 16. Can't get around, Vazika. And then it's shot down the ice and going back is Bob Brook, number 13 for Team USA. Shot into the center ice area. Sampson got it into the Soviet, Alexander Tiznik. And for Team USA, Mark Barron. Mark, the nation's top college goaltender the past two years from Madison, Wisconsin. Played for the University of Wisconsin. Brooke trying to shoot it in. It was blocked, and Brooke gets it again. Over to his defense partner, Mark Fusco. Shot to center. Intercepting it is Erdia. Now cleared in by Corey Millen for the United States. Soviets lose it. Here's Sampson centers to Millen. A shot. And he's next to say. This is Mark Fusco, number six for the USA. Fusco clears it in for Bushin for the Soviets. Got it to center. And Coben has it there. Passing it ahead to Gurdia. Cleared away now by Verkota. Into the corner. It is Gurdiak for the Soviets. But breaking it up and coming back is Tim Thomas. Now Sampson dumps it in. Martinianov was there to get it. Over to his defense partner, and then it's shot to center ice. Brolikov getting a pass ahead. To Shipka. He was checked, and there is a shot that Darren hangs on to and makes the save. For ready or not, and especially the width of the, the sites being an extra 15 feet wider than the normal ice surface. And an extra 10 feet longer, so the big ice surface for the U.S. team as the Soviets. Now the play goes offside. Lou Nanny and I had an interesting visit with the Soviet coach, Anatoly Bogdanov, 36 years of age, and speaks pretty good English. He certainly does, and he's brought his team in Kiev up to fourth position, and that's why they're giving him this team to coach to just see how he would do with the team representing the Soviets. That's the coach, Bogdanov. Now the United States on the attack. The other Fusco brothers, Scott, trying to center it. Broken up and taking it is Minchenkopf. Got the center ice. Soviet in the center ice area, but breaking it up right there was David H. Jensen. Two Jensen's on this United States team. Now a chance for Mark Kuppel, number 25, and he was checked for the Soviet. Rolling top. Got it to the line, and this is Hurst for the United States. Over to his defense partner, David H. Jensen, who dumped it in. Now, back to Chelios at the point, a shot. That's blocked, and Jim Thomas to Chelios again, a shot. And Tiznik made the save, and the Soviets clear at the center. Soviets on the attack now, a chance for Karim, and it is stopped. High sticking penalty on that last play, so the Soviets will have an early power play. No score in this game, and from the faceoff, Team USA trying to clear it. Held in by the Soviets. They work it over for Svetlov. He drops it back to number 22, Stepanishev. Now back to the point, the shot, there and the save. Rebound and poking away at it was Svetlov. But Barron held on to it. Barron made a great play because that puck was deflected right in front by Svetlov. And that's something the Soviets like to do, get the shot from outside. They have someone in front screening the goaltender like Svetlov right there. But Barron stopped the deflection and gathered it up quickly before it was left alone for Svetlov to put in. Mark Barron, 
end out of the University of Wisconsin the last couple of years, the nation's top college goaltender. A minute 43 left in the penalty to Thomas of Team USA. And immediately the puck shot down the ice by Mark Fusco. This is Bozikov, number four for the Soviets. Leaving it there for Golikov, number 19. He maneuvers in, but Fusco is there to clear it away. Bozikov, number four. Into the center ice area to Stepinashev. He drops it back again to Vazakop. The shot blocked in front. Rebound handled by Golikop. Unable to center it. And Team USA clear it away. Well, the Soviets still attempting to get the shot from outside. And they don't pass that puck in deep like they used to. They want a long shot and a deflection attempt. Here's Gimaev. Let's a shot go wide of the short side. Over on the other wing, Swetlov got it in, but Team USA cleared away. And the Soviets have to retreat. That was Mark Kumpel who shot it down the ice. Soviets. Martinov got it to center. Now back over for Coven. Drop pass and the shot by Sturdyak was wide. Team USA clear it down the ice. 13 seconds left in the penalty. Pass into the center ice area. Coven is checked. And here is Pat LaFontaine breaking away. Tried to get it in front of the net to David A. Jensen, but it was broken up. Back comes Sturdia. Penalty is up to Thomas. Team USA has killed it off. Chelios taking the Soviet player out of the play in the corner. And now Thomas just out of the penalty box. The number seven, David A. Jensen. Now a penalty coming up against the Soviets. Vladimir Kovin will go to the penalty box. Another attempt with the man advantage to see if they could score, but the U.S. team did a fine job on that last penalty. And they shoot it down the ice once more. Going back is Popekin, number 28. Head manning it on the left wing side to Sergei Perrin. Now to number 12. Adinsop, he's checked. Circling in the center ice area is Ziba. Tied up on the checking of Tim Thomas. Soviets get it in, but Gay, number 19, has it for Team USA. Fires it down the ice. And it's 17 left in the penalty. This is Popeka, number 28. Ed Manning it for Kareen, number 15. Sergey Kareen dropping it back to the point, to the other point, and the drive by Minchenkov was wide, and then it's shot away by Phil Verkota. Minchenkov for the Soviets. 52 seconds left in the penalty. Minchenkov working it over to his partner, who was checked in the play, and Verkota, number eight, has it for USA. Shoots! And he put it high off the glass. Controlling is Gary Sampson, number 27. And he shot it down the ice. Ilya Diakon. Over onto the other wing now. Into the center ice area to Grayakon. And the play is called back on an offside. Well, Phil Verkota had as good a chance as the Soviets had while he was killing that penalty. He got a shot, but he got it up high over the glass. But the Soviets in the two penalties they've had so far, power play attempts have only had one shot on net. There's Verkota's shot. It just got deflected up over the goaltender and over the glass, but it stayed in play. The U.S. team doing a very good, solid job as we look at that shot again of killing the penalty, not giving the Soviets any room to operate once they get into the U.S. zone. The Soviets are moving up the ice good enough, but they're not getting any control in the U.S. zone. U.S. playing very tough back there and getting that puck down ice. Just 20 seconds now left in the penalty. Vazakov for the Soviets are on the power play. Now they work it in on the left side to Svetlov. He drops it back and it's poked by a diving U.S. player, Mark Fusco, to center ice. Soviets shoot it in. Charging in after this goalie cop. Centered and unable to get her shot away with Svetlov. The penalty is up. There's a shot blocked by Tom Hirsch who had just come out of the penalty box. 
Now Team USA on the attack. They drop it back, but the shot was blocked by Golita. No score in this game as the Soviets come on the attack. And intercepting it there is Gary Haight. Now a lead pass ahead to Scott Bukestad. Shot! Save on the short side by Giesnick, the Soviet goaltender. Gimaev, number three. Lead pass ahead on right wing to Stepanishev. He was knocked down. And now the puck shot to center ice by Scott Fusco to Paul Gay. Dropping it back and charging in was Bob Brook. He was upended at the blue line. And the play was offside on the play anyway. No score here in Lake Placid. The first hurry. Team USA with a forward line now of Tim Thomas, Rich Costello, and Paul Gay. Digging in with Costello. Now Gay charges in to help up and forces a face-off in the Soviet zone. Well, this U.S. team's got a great deal of versatility. And back on the blue line, they've got uh, Bob Brook that can play forward. Tom Herscher can play forward. And tonight, Tim Thomas is playing up front center, and he's usually a defenseman. And he's got a great deal of speed, and that's what makes him so effective. You were looking at the USA defensive combination. Uh, Brook and Fusco. Soviets win the faceoff. Lead pass up the middle to Shurdiak. He was checked, and now controlling it is Mark Fusco. Passing it over to Brook, who shot at the center. And it comes to the Soviet line, and now back to the play. A penalty called, I believe, against the Soviets. Gerbushin had his elbow up. And he goes to the penalty box, Sergei Gerbushin. And this will give Team USA their first power play opportunity of the evening. They've got a very explosive power play. As we see Gerbushin yeah. come in, get his elbow up on the check right here. Referee Foss set right on top of the play. Calls him, and the U.S. goes on a power play for the first time tonight. Watch Pat Lafontaine on this power play. Number 16, he's very dangerous. He's got great offensive skills. Great perception of what's going on at the ice all time. And this Team USA power play has been very effective. Shelly Elson, Hirsch, the port, are the point men with LaFontaine, David A. Jensen, and Olchek up front. Soviet short handed as Broly Cop fires high and wide. Team USA drop it back. They're on the power play. They're first of this game. Shelly number 21. Got it to the Soviet line, broken up, and here's a break for Crowley Cop. But hustling back was Tom Hirsch, number 22. This is Hirsch. Over to Chelios. Lead pass, broken up, and now carried in by Olcha. Back to Hirsch at the point. In behind the net, Lafontaine got it in front, but it's cleared away by the Soviets. Eugenie Shepta. And both these point men, both Chelios and Hirsch, can really shoot that puck for Team USA. They get a shot. They're dangerous back there. Here's Old Jack, the youngest man on the United States team. Only 17 years of age. He got it in. Puck into the corner. And taken now by Matitsin for the Soviets and shot down the ice. And that old check, number 12, you'll see him drafted very high this year in the NHL. Just an outstanding player, very solid on the skates. Out of Chicago, there are fellas from eight different states on this Team USA this year. Here's Corey Miller getting it in for Bukestad. Miller comes in to help out, but the Soviets take over. And for Peekton, cleared it onto the board. Now over to get it for Team USA. It's Fusco. Back to his brother, Mark. And... A weak shot that the Soviets take over. And then clearing it down the ice for Kopikin. And then he took quite a hit right at center ice. 9.02 left in the period. 12 seconds left in the Soviets' penalty to Gorbushev. And Mark Fusco really took that Kopikin in. He almost put him right over the boards. Here he comes up the ice, and here comes little Fusco, the Hobie Baker winner. He put that Kopikin right into Team USA bench as, as the whistle was blown. Three-time All-American, Mark Fusco, from Walburn, Massachusetts. This goalie cop, number 19 for the Soviets, has played on a great men number of uh, national teams for the Soviets. The most experienced man on the Soviet Union team here tonight. Well, Nanny, you were worried about the first 10 minutes they're gone by. That's right, and, and Team USA playing with a great deal of point. Here's Burkota, and the goal 
tender teasement came out and upended him. Penalized player for the Soviets is back on. Brook holding the puck in. They rule it came outside the blue line. And it's called in the 80 Olympics in this game tonight. I'll tell you more about that as this evening goes along. A scoreless game as Aya Freedy got it into the zone. Aya Freedy now centers it over to Burkota. Shoots! Just off the stick of Pisa. Now Sampson for Team USA couldn't hold it in the zone. And the Soviets come back, led by Stepanishev. And the shot goes up over the glass and into the crowd. Talking about young players, as we were at Olachek, as we look at Coach Lou Vero, Eli Afridi, that number 18, is only a 17-year-old. He passed that puck right there to Bracota, who took the shot, but it was a good save by Tiznik. But that pass came across from Eli Afridi right there to Bracota. He got a quick shot away, a good save by the goaltender, and the puck went away as Sampson was right on the doorstep. But look for Eli Afridi. He'll go probably in the top three, undoubtedly in the top five of the draft this year in the National Hockey League. Eli Afridi and Olchek are... The two youngest players on this team and eligible for the National Hockey League draft. Here are the Soviets. Gerdiak got it to the line. Gerdiak, number seven, still controlling, shot it in. Rich Costello bumped in the corner, knocked off the puck. The Soviet player, Coven, trying to center. Now over onto the other wing, Marnikov. Couldn't get it, and it comes back to center. Gorbushin got it into the... USA zone and the play goes offside. Well, the one thing that Team USA has done well tonight, they have adjusted to that extra 15 feet in width. You would have been coming down the ice, they've been able to block them off at the blue line pretty well. Here's Chelios, a draft choice of the Montreal Canadiens. Cleared it into the Soviet zone and back to get it is Ventenkov. Got it to center ice, first for Team USA. Cleared it in, lap on team to Jensen. But intercepting was Biakin, who clears to center ice. Here's Team USA, and that's called back on an offside, and a faceoff coming up inside the USA blue line. Well, the rich get richer. Your friend Bill Torrey and the <laughs> Islanders will grab Pat LaFontaine sometime after the Olympics. They certainly will, and this youngster got 99 goals in junior hockey last year. A great idea of what to do when he gets that puck. Ever dangerous and the outstanding goal scorer in this hockey club so far this year. 34 goals and 35 assists for LaFontaine this year. The top production on Team USA. Now it is first for the United States holding it in. Soviets now clear it into the center ice zone. And there you see kicking it ahead, Kriyakin. Now it is Vincenka. Centers one. Aaron got a piece of it as it came by his crease. Trying to hold it in was Biakin. And now Team USA worked it to Jensen. Ahead to LaFontaine. And he was checked by the only man back. LaFontaine unable to get it again. LaFontaine still after it. Gets it to David A. Jensen. Now the Soviets come back. Priyakin shoots right on. Aaron makes the save and held on to it. This telecast is protected by copyright and is intended solely for the non-written consent of SNI Sports Network and the Petri Television Sports Department is strictly prohibited. And a concern, Bogdanov, looking at his team, probably expected to be ahead at this time, not knowing what the U.S. had and knowing they were a young team. I'm sure very surprised at the capability of this USA hockey team. Corey Millen, the smallest player on Team USA, ready to take the faceoff. He's listed at 5'7", seven, and 5'7", seven, and 155. Millen battling Adinsop. The Soviets get it. They score! Harin, the 20-year-old winger, gets the puck and popped it home, and the Soviets take the lead. Well, for a moment, it looked like the whistle would blow. The puck was covered up at the face-off spot and everyone sort of froze here just momentarily it's all it took Adinov got it off slid the pass alone to a wide open Harin Mark Barron had no chance the moment that that, that defense and left Harin broke for the open watch him on the right side of your screen he'll just go right to the front of the net as it looked like the whistle was low and he got that pass across and slammed it home Sergey Harin getting the goal now the United States come back but the long shot is handled by 
teased Nick. And he held on to it and will have a face off. Alexander Tiesnik, 25-year-old goaltender, plays with the Army team in the Soviet League. Now here's a shot by Brook from the point. He picked the save. Soviets clear it. Brook held it in. Here's Burkota. Couldn't get his shot away. And it comes to center ice. Bill Burkota, who was with the United States when they won the gold medal here, had it. Back comes the Soviets. Butlov shoots. And... A save there by Vera. Good chance by Svetlov, number 14. There's Sampson, 14, USA. Shooting! And a stick save by Milnikov, or pardon me, by Tiznik, the Soviet goaltender. Coming up with it is Svetlov. Now they work it over onto the far wing, and controlling is Kapenesha. Shot it in. The United States behind now, one to nothing. Gimaev shoots one, blocked that the defense, held in and a backhander right on. Darren made the save on Fazakov and held on to it. The Soviet Odensov to make it one to nothing. Still 5-11 left in the first period. Ready on a face-off. Soviets get the draw. Varnikov got it into the corner. But now. Scott Bukestad got it to center ice. Here's the drop pass coming back. The USA defenseman fired it wide. Gary Haight missing the net from the point. Now a shot by David H. Jensen off the goaltender Tiesnick and into the corner. And a jam up there and a stoppage in play. Well, Scott Bukestad took this fellow Koivin in the boards and got the whistle. Koivin probably next in seniority to Golikov from his hockey club. He's a veteran of the Canada Cup Championships, the World Championships, and he's one of the finer players in the Soviet Union. When they made some changes today, Dan, he was one of the fellows they added. We had a uh, lineup change of 10 different players, and Koivin was one of the fellows they wanted to bring over. Because We've had a... three different lineups in the yeah. short time I've been here. Well, that's his line mate, Varnikov, that plays with him, and the only fellow that's not here today is Schwarzkopf. Here's Teliel from the point with a shot that goes wide of the net. Now Costello for Team USA. He's checked, and the Soviets start back. Lead pass on right wing to Priyakin. Shoots off the shoulder of Mark Barron. Hurst now trying to clear it, gets it to Costello. And now back to number 22, Tom Hurst. Hurst to Telio. Gallios, number 21, to Paul Gay, number 19. Gay for Team USA. Lost it, but Gallios was there to cover up, and he feeds it for Hurst. Shot to Gay at center ice. Now ahead to Tim Thomas, number 20. Thomas centers off the speed of Hurst, and they're just wide of the net. Gay jamming up with a Soviet player in the corner. And a stoppage in play and a face-off coming up in the Soviet zone. Well, we had a close call at both ends. First, Gay drops a pass as we see Gay going off right there. He drops it to Chelios, and it almost got stolen, and the Russian had a good opportunity there. But Chelios made a good play. The puck comes down the ice. Tim Thomas, number 20, breaking down the left side. Sees Hirsch, 22, breaking through the net, and it goes right off Hirsch's skate, and the goaltender made the save. The Soviets leading. Puck is centered. As getting it in front of the net is Olchek. Now a shot from the point block. And the Soviets come back to center ice. Trying to work it in. Brook knocked it down for Team USA. This is Popika. Losing it. Here's LaFontaine. Couldn't get around the defense. Soviets come back. A four-man rush for the Soviets. And breaking it up. At the defense was Mark Fusco. Now the Soviets have it again. They get it in front, and intercepting it once again was Mark Fusco, number six. Got up to center ice. Olchek is knocked down. Buck shot by Team USA, and it flips up over the boards at the Soviets leading Team USA. Lead shot blocked, and Corey Millen cleared to center for the United States. Number 19 is goalie cop. Works it in onto the right side. Sweatlob shoots off the goal post. Sweatlob with.
with a chance, and he just missed. And now the United States come back. Number 27 is Gary Sampson. Got it into the zone, now poke back to Sampson in the corner. Sampson unable to center. Bozikov cleared it, held in, and a shot by Aya Brady. Just deflected wide. Sampson digs in on the boards, gets help from Miller. He cleared it behind the net. And this is Bozikov, number four. Yuri Bozikov. Shot up to center. Shot back in by Tom Hurst. The Soviets leading in the game. One to nothing. Get up to center. Hurst, number 22, breaking it up. Now the Soviets take control again. Bozikov clearing it. Intercepting it on, carrying it on right wing as Scott Busco tried to drop it back, and the Soviets intercept. And here they come to center ice. It is Coleman. Shoots, Aaron the save, and it is cleared away by Chelios. Now Chelios upended the Soviet player, Sturdia. Hirsch comes over to get the puck for Team USA. The Busco to Hirsch. Who gets it to center ice? Picked up by Bukestad. He just fires it to the corner. And the Soviets hustle back to try and clear it. Now controlling is Coben, number 10. Ahead on the right side to Skurdia. He was checked. Now centered. We're in the final minute of the play. Coben trying to center it. Comes back to the point to Stepka. His shot blocked, and then it's shot away by Rich Costello. There's the return pass as Costello broke in and missed with a backhander. Hilstead to Costello. Back in front of the net to Brook, but intercepted by the Soviets. Held in by Bukestad. We're in the final 30 seconds of this period. Holding it in again is Paul Gay. But the Soviets regain control and clear up the center ice. Number six, Mark Busco has the puck. Busco, lead pass to David A. Jensen, number seven. David A. Jensen dropping it out of the side of the net. Here's a chance, and the pass just out of the reach of Tim Thomas. Penalty coming up to the Soviets. Delayed penalty coming up. And now as they get control, the penalty is called, and the period comes to an end with the United States. Mounting a pretty good attack in the final second. Vladimir uh, Golikov, who clears it down the ice. And back goes the United States to control the puck. Chelios, number 21. Now over to Hurst, number 22. Back to Chelios. At center ice. Pass intended for LaFontaine, but intercepting it is Gimaya. Shot in, and again it is Hurst. To Chelios, number 21. Chris Chelios gets it across the line. A shot, and it's fired wide and high, and then bounces all the way down the ice. Good chance for the United States, but Ed Olchek was off the target. That's right, and Chelios had made the play. He was on the left side, and that puck came all around the board to where Chelios' position was. A good shot by Olchek, but just a little too high, too far to the left. Here's Bukestad, dropping it back to Chelios, shoots, oh, and firing it wide of the open side was Corey Millen. Millen had an open net to shoot at, and he fired wide, and Team USA missed a golden chance there. Oh, and Corey Millen's going to see that one over in his sleep. He had a wide open net as the puck was deflected. You'll see the shot from Chelios come right there and deflect left, and there's Corey Millen with a wide open net because... Tijnik had moved out to make the save, and he just put it wide of the net. A good try by Millen, but wide and high, and the score remains. Soviet Union won, USA nothing, as the USA is still in the power play. Now it is Scott Busco centering the line, but he's tossed out of the faceoff, and Scott Bukestad will take the draw. It is Busco, Bukestad, and Mark Kumpel up front. Bukestad got it in front. Now it is taken by Brook, number 13. Over to the other Fusco, who is Mark at the point. Gets it in on the boards to Bugstad. He's checked. Now Mark Fusco couldn't hold it in. Coben got it to center ice. 
Team USA on the power play. Corey Millis in behind his own goal. Now over onto this side for Mark Fusco. Lead pass ahead to Miller. Miller number 26 digs into the corner. Gets help from Bukestad on the play. Now back to Fusco at the point. That shot block. And the Soviets shoot at the center. Sturdia in across the line. The penalized player is back on. So the Soviets have killed it off. Soviets hold it in. Now controlling is Bob Brook. Lead pass to Bukestad. Shooting. And a skate save there by Tiznik. And the Soviets control in their own zone. They lead this game one to nothing. Lead pass at center for Coven. Coven number 10 couldn't get it in front. Now Coven without a stick back of the net trying to hold it there. He's bumped on the play by Gary Sampson. Buck comes over and Sampson cleared it but not out. Soviets, Coven trying to hold it in. He's back with a solid check. And back comes Team USA. Gary Sampson, number 27. Centered it. They score! Bill Vercona! There to tip it in and tie this game up. Well, a good play by Gary Sampson going to the outside of the Soviet defenseman. As he drew the man over, he slides that puck in front of Vercona, breaking for the net. There's Sampson going wide. He'll slide that puck to Vercota, breaking to the net. Vercota just deflects it real quickly. He doesn't even try and shoot it because he's being protected there. And he just deflects that puck right by goaltender Tiznik. A good play by Vercota because he sees Martinov right on him. And he deflects it. Very intelligent young man, and he's really improved his skating. He's become a very fine hockey player. Bill Vercota has just tied it up for Team USA. Now a loose puck in the center ice area. And the Soviets dump it in. Going back to get it is David H. Jensen, number 28. Two Jensen's on this Team USA. Pass at center ice to Tim Thomas. He couldn't get it, and now the play is whistled down as Costello controlled it. He needs to help the U.S. Olympic team. A 1-1 game here in Lake Placid, New York. This is Matitsa, number 29, back to get it. Clearing it. Maya Prady at the line, tried to hold it in, couldn't. And the Soviets on the attack. Broken up at the defense. The Soviets, however, hold it in. Adinsov gets it to the corner. Maya Prady, number 18, trying to clear it. Now back of the goal. Jensen couldn't get it out of there, but coming up with it for the United States is Rich Costello to Ally Prady. Maya Prady to Thomas. The Soviets intercept and open, Popekin, I should say, cleared it. And they rule it came outside the blue line, and then the play is whistled down on an offside. Well, that's better than they were in that first period. That scoring play at 3.06 here of the second period was for Coda from Bukestad and Sampson. Now a centering pass right through the Soviets' goal trace. And the Soviets start back. Lead pass ahead for... A Soviet player, Stepanishev, and then the puck winds up going over the glass and into the crowd. Well, I mentioned we have a couple of Jensen's to keep track of in this game. That's David A., the defenseman. Well, he's a wing. He's from Needham, Mass., and he was a first-round draft pick. Quite a hockey player, very knowledgeable hockey player. Here's a good pass uh, by the Soviets, but a smart hit by Chelios. He uh, has to make sure that he's closing that gap. You see Chelios coming around from the far side with a wide ice surface. The defensemen are getting caught a little too far apart, and the Soviets are trying to break the man up the middle. Chelios reacting very well there. So David A., the man we just looked at, David H. Jensen, is the forward. David H. Jensen is the defenseman. Two Jensen's, and they're both named David, no relation, of course. Here are the Soviets on the attack. Drop pass back. A shot. Oh! On the second rebound, they were able to poke it in. Well, the Soviets had a three-on-two break, and Svetlov, their top line right there, came in, had an opportunity, and as Barron was down and the save was initially made, you'll see the shot from the left side right there. The save is made, but the puck was loose right in front. I think it was Colvin that put it in. Right, Svetlov coming across the far side, taking the shot right here. 
And as the puck bounces free, Colvin's right on the doorstep to get that free puck and put it by Barron. So the Soviets take the lead again at two to one. Buck loose in the center ice area. Bob Brook from the United States. Couldn't clear it. Now hustling back is Mark Fusco. Mark Fusco, number six. At center ice to Gary Sampson. His bouncer. Rebound to Vercota, and he put it up high. Here's Vercota again. Now they center one. Sampson behind the net. Sampson tried to get it back to Vercota. Sampson wants more. Centers one, but nobody able to get a stick on it. And the puck goes down the ice. This is number six, Mark Fusco. Flipped it off the board. Intercepting it there is Gorbushin. Now Vercota, number eight for Team USA. Dropping it to Sampson. Sampson centers a shot. goaltender Teasdick. Back of the net, Sampson jamming up with Gorbushin. Buck comes loose. Here's Corey Millen behind the net. Millen given a rough ride by Gorbushin. Team USA trying to center it. Busco got a pass away to a teammate, but it was intercepted and cleared down the ice by the Soviets. Mark Fusco back to touch it, and a 2-1, the Soviets leading. Team USA now trying to put some pressure on. The Aachen winding it around onto the boards on this side for Nijenkov, shot to center, back comes Team USA. Topo, number 25, got it in front, but cleared away by Nijenkov. Two to one, the Soviets lead as they come to center once again. This is Triakin. Couldn't get it through the defense. And Yukstad headmans it for a couple of center ice. Now tipping it ahead for Gary Hayden. Hayden into the corner, unable to center. Soviets work it free. Prolikov. Passing it now to Minchenka. He centered one, and right in front of the net was Hirsch to clear it away for Team USA. Rich Costello had it for a moment. He lost it. Now Costello gets it again. He's number 14. Tried to center, and just grabbed by Prolikov and cleared away. Now Team USA take over once again. Tim Thomas to Costello. Trying to get it ahead to Iafredi. He was upended. And then it's shot down the ice by the Soviets. Out of the goal. Darren to clear it. Held in by the Soviets. A center one. Over onto this side. Steven. Knocked off the puck in the corner. Here's Paul Gay. Clearing it to center ice. Shot back in by number 15, Kareem, for the Soviets. Now back to get it is Tim Thomas, number 20. He's knocked down in the play. Soviets get it free to Zeeman. Zeeman, number 24. Gets it again in the corner. Zeeman from behind the net, dropping it back. The shot to Flex, and Barron got a piece of it as the team from the right point. And then it's cleared down the ice. But Beacon got that shot away from the point that Barron just got a piece of. It Two to one, that last scoring play. Goalie cop got the goal. 4.58 the time. The assists on the play. Stepanishev got one. Swetlov the other. 4.58 was the time of the goal. You'll get to see these two teams again a week from tonight in St. Louis. They're playing Sunday in Minneapolis, and they go Cleveland, Indianapolis, Cincinnati. will be in your hometown next Friday. So oh, some chances for fans uh, across the country to have a look at Team USA and the touring Soviet selects. Here is Brook clearing it ahead to LaFontaine. Now drop back and the shot right on rebound. And Busco almost put it in on the rebound. Clearing it is Gimaev around in the boards. The Soviets who lead this game. Harry across the line. 
And there for the United States is Mark Fusco. Passes it out on right wing. David A. Jensen couldn't get it. Now LaFontaine to Jensen. Out in front to Oltak. He scores! And Oltak! The 17-year-old youngster from Chicago. And what a goal it was by Oltak. Everyone thought it was going to be icy. LaFontaine noticed that the linesman waved it off. He gave it to Jensen, and they sent it all alone to Olchek in front. He waited. This young man, just 17 years old from Chicago, look at the poise he shows. He waits. He gets he's kicked down and flips it up and over. A fine play by Ed Olchek, one of those outstanding youngsters on this hockey club. Only 17 years old. What composure he showed in that play. Giving away some scouting secrets as Lunani tonight. I don't think that's too much giving away. People have seen these kids play a lot. A 2-2 game here before a standing room only crowd in Lake Placid. The Soviets clear one to center ice. Verbushin gets it in across the line. And the United States back to get it. This is Sampson. Lead pass into the Soviet zone. Varnikov now dropping it back and now they clear it ahead to Sturdia. He's number seven. Check from behind. Team USA comes back. Millen number 26 puts it in. Going back to get it. Martinov. Long pass on right wing to Coven. Coven number 10. Can't get around. First the defenseman. And now the United States under pressure clear at the center ice. And Tenkop is back to get it. Number two, Alexander Minchenkov shot at the center. First knocked it down, and here comes Team USA. Into the corner is Mark Kumpel. Kumpel centered it. Soviets break it up, and back they come. A 2-2 game now as Bryakin works it over on left wing. Step there was check, and here's a break for Team USA. Not Fusco into the corner. He's checked. Now Bukestad behind the net. Bosco trying to get it in front, but Minchenkov was there to clear it. Held in by Rich Costello. He gets help on the board from David H. Jensen. And now the puck comes back to center ice to Chris Kellio. Long shot wide of the goal. Costello into the corner. He's checked in Trollikov. Cleared it in the Soviets. Get it off the center ice. Going to be a penalty on the play. And I think both teams will be in hate. Are both in there? That's right. Hate took an elbow first, and then he comes back at the to get the puck, and the referee called them both for uh, a penalty. Now, I don't know why Hate got a penalty there. It looked to me like he was the only fellow that received anything. Gary Hate, by the way, from Washington, talking about having players from all over. Washington, the state of Washington, putting a player on this Olympic game is really well. Steppa got his for elbowing. Gary Hate gets his for roughing. He should have given it to him for receiving. I didn't see him do anything back then. Here's a lead pass for the Soviet player, Zeman. And coming back quickly to break it up was Bob Brook. Brook over to Mark Fusco. Lead pass goes into the Soviet zone. And the Soviet player, Bopikin, comes right back. Pass to Zeman. Zeman couldn't get around the defense, and it's shot away by David A. Jensen. LaFontaine, number 16, in to get it for the United States. Back to Brook, a drive, and a stick save by Tiznik. And the Soviets shoot it away. Well, you can tell the Soviets are having pressure put on them because you don't see them icing the puck too often, and that's exactly what they had to do there as LaFontaine and Brook worked the play where Brook was able to get a good shot on net. Both teams, however, using the body very well. Uh, agents and defensemen. Your Minnesota club then would have more draftees on this U.S. team than any other NHL club. Yes, we would. But uh, a lot of teams have got players in this. Yeah, we'll mention them as the evening goes along. Here is the defenseman, Vazakov, shooting it in. Chelios back to get it. Team USA breaking away. Old Jack moving in. Old Jack shoots. Hit save by Kiesner. Now back to Chelios. He couldn't knock it down at the point and has to chase back after it. 
A lot of room to skate on this large ice surface. Each team a man short at this point. Number 21, Chris Chelios. Native of Chicago, now lives in San Diego. Lead pass to Olchak. Moving in, and a save by Pieznik and a penalty coming up against the Soviets. And Team USA will have the man advantage. That 2-2 two -two game. Well-deserved penalty because Olchak takes his pass right there from Chelios, breaks in, and he had a good attempt on Pieznik, but he's pulled right down as he gets the shot away by Vosikov. And the U.S. now four against three since each team had a man in the box previous to that will be in a power play for two minutes and four against three for 13 seconds of it. So a chance for the United States in this 2-2 game. Right from the faceoff for Bushin. Played it off the boards and down the ice. Chelios, number 21. Back to get it. Chelios, the former second-round draft choice of Montreal, feeding it ahead on right wing to Tom Hurst. He dumps it in. And back for the Soviets, Gorbushin, got it to center ice. And Kelio, rink wide pass over to Hurt. And the U.S. will try and get this puck to Bukestead, number 17, because he's got a very quick release and a good shot. And they like to get him the puck in a power play when he's out there. Martimianov, however, clears it away for the Soviets. Going back is Kelio. He's forechecked hard in the corner by... The Soviet player, and we get a stoppage in play. Digging hard in there was Farnica. Chelio states his hometown of San Diego. That's where his family lives now. As we look at Scott Butestead, who led the WCHA in scoring last year, the college uh, league, a very good goal scorer and was a center in college. But Chelios was born in Chicago, went to San Diego, played his hockey in Moose Gauss, Saskatchewan, drafted by Montreal, and has had a great career his two years at uh, Wisconsin. Here from the faceoff. Soviets can't hold it in and controlling is Scott Fusco. He couldn't move it into the zone. And now it is shot by Brook to Millen. Millen taken out of the play by Biakin. Soviets come back. Here's Marine. Trying to center it. Good play defensively by Mark Fusco. His pass to Bob Brook. Brook across the line to Bukestad. And then it came outside the line, and it's called on an outside. This fellow, Mark Fusco, tonight has stopped three different occasions. He was able to steal that puck right in front of Barron as a pass was coming across by the Russians. Playing a very solid game back there. A small man in the height, but really wide, strong, good balance on the skate. And he's got an outstanding head. Knows exactly what to do with the puck. A very fine young man. A graduate of Harvard, he's... Uh, you got to have a good head if you yeah. go to Harvard, right? <laughs> he's the fellow that's, that's got a lot to for him, I'll tell you. Now LaFontaine centering a line with David A. Jensen and old check on the wings. Here's LaFontaine, number 16, to David A. Jensen, who couldn't get it in. And Chenkov tied him up. Buck comes free at center ice. Steppa. Now over onto the far side. And Biakka losing it to Brook. Number 13, Bob Brook out of Yale. Buck is knocked back, and Mark Fusco is back to pick it up. Still on the power play, but just 10 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Fusco got it to LaFontaine. He was checked. Biakka now breaking in. Now we're going to get a penalty against the United States on the play. A holding call brought across the line by the Soviet Union player, and he just pulled him down. But he thought that he, since he stripped the man of the puck, he might be able to get away with that. But giving the Soviet Union another power play, you know, you're getting to get to a position where you're giving them too many opportunities. They haven't scored yet. I wonder how long that'll continue. A 2 2 game. The Soviets put the man advantage here. Aya Freedy works it loose to Sampson, and Gary Sampson clears it out of there. Burkota put some heat on for Peepton, but he cleared it. Adinsov couldn't handle it. Now, here's a chance for Zeeman, and Burkota got back to break it up, and it shot down the ice. The goaltender, Tiesnik, shooting it on the board. Coming up with it is Matitsin. Now, he headmans it for Zeeman, number 24. Drop pass back, comes to Matitsin at the point. Over to the other point, the drive there and the save. On 
Bob Beacon, and then the United States clear up to the center. And it's six left in the penalty. Colby had dropped it back into their own zone. This is goalie cop. They circle. Now to Gimayev. They drop it back to Gimayev again. Sergei Gimayev. Over skated the puck. Now controls once more. They circle. Sweatlop now flipping it in. But the United States clear it right back out as David H. Jensen shot at the center. Colby its attack again. Here is a chance for Svetlov. They drop it back to the point. Vazakov a shot here in the save. Loose puck. And the Soviets get it once more. Vazakov over to Gimaya. Back to Vazakov. Shot right on. And Mark Barron makes the body save. And then held on to it. The Soviets attempting that play again, getting the puck back to the blue line and putting two men in front of the screen. But Barron was able to make the save and not give a rebound. He knew at that moment that he had two Soviet players, Svetlov and Kolikov, right in the doorstep. You see Hirsch taking one out. Here's the shot from the blue line. And as he makes the save, both Svetlov and Kolikov coming to the net. But Hirsch taking one away and Barron making the save and holding the puck. Barron, the number five draft choice of the Winnipeg Jets in 1981. So he's another of the Team USA players drafted by National Hockey League clubs. And he's won two national championships for Wisconsin. He's got a reputation of coming up with a big game when you need it. He's a great pressure player, had an outstanding career. And he's from Madison, Wisconsin, which is unusual. I think he's uh, one of the first ones to achieve All-American recognition from Madison. Buck is shot in. Now the penalized player, Brooke, is back on. Buck shot around on the boards. Held in by Bozakov. Soviets couldn't hold it in, and it shot to center ice. The Soviets have it again. Soviets on the attack, trying to center it. They could not. Now it's dropped back to the point to Gimaya. He's checked, and here's Mark Fusco ahead to Rich Costello, number 14. Costello trying to go wide. Trying to center it. Paul Gay now in the corner. Gay to Costello, back to Gay. Centering pass to Aya Freedy, a drive! Wide by about three feet. Team USA in this 2-2 game, work it to Paul Gay. He was knocked down. And spinning and circling is Golikov. Here's Golikov, number 19, the Bozikov. Now they center to Golikov. A chance there on the save on a pulsing try. Back to the point. The shot is blocked by Rich Costello, who came diving out. And hustling back is Martin Yana. Soviets working on right wing to Skurdia. He's number seven, Viktor Skurdia. Throw the defense. Shoots. They're on the save on that. And then it's cleared by Aya Brady. We're in the final minute of the second period. A 2-2 game in Lake Placid, New York. Soviets with pressure on. They center one, but stationed perfectly was Kumpel to break it up. Mark Kumpel over on the left wing to Scott Fusco. Ridden out of the play by Garbushin. And then the puck goes over the glass into the crowd, and we're down to 37 seconds left in the second period. And the puck went off that fellow Scott Butte said it's foot, and that's why the faceoff will come outside the zone as Coach Lou Vero looks at his team and has got to be very pleased with the kind of effort that his team's putting out tonight. Barron making a sensational save on this play right here because he was all alone, had to make the save, and the rebound cleared behind the net. Team USA doing an outstanding job of helping one another out and blocking people out. You see another great skate save right there by Barron. That was two fine saves that he had to make, both time on security of Duke, number seven, who had outstanding chances. But Barron, again, proving why he's such a great pressure goaltender. Gerdiak was the man who had the great chance that we just showed you. Puck loose at center ice. Lafontaine couldn't get anywhere, and Ryakin had it for the Soviets. Now, Soviets on the attack again. A drop pass back, centered, and cleared away by Olchek. Olchek then takes the Soviet player into the boards, and with 11 seconds left, we get a stoppage in play. And what a game Olchek's playing. As we look at Shepta, 
he's one of the fine forwards that this uh, Soviet club has brought over, and he's had a couple of good outstanding chances tonight. Just a youngster, but uh, who's younger than Olchek out there? And boy, what a game he's played tonight. He's as fine a young player tonight as you're going to see. He's had some great chances. He's working very well defensively also. Coming up on our intermission, you'll meet Bill Verkota, who has scored one of the United States goals, and a special feature on Pat LaFontaine, a high draft choice of the New York Islanders. We're in the final seconds here of the period, and Chelios just held the puck against the boards, and another face-off coming up to the right of Mark Barron, the Team USA goaltender. Well, there's only four seconds left in the period, and one thing LaFontaine wants to do is bring that puck back, make sure the Soviets don't get a chance off this face-off, because they've got plenty of time to score should they win it. Goalie Kopp against LaFontaine, a false start, and they'll try it again. Fortunately, Golikov got thrown out, and he's one of the better center icemen that they have. Gimayev steps up to take the face off. Golikov's complaining. Golikov saying, how come me and not <laughs> laugh on James? That's exactly right. Referee says, you just get back there and play your position because the Soviets, being the visitors, have to get their stick down first on the face off. Gimayev, a 2 2 game as we move into the third period. Here in Lake Placid, New York. And immediately, LaFontaine gets it for the United States. They drop it back. And now fired to Olchak, who tips it into the Soviet zone. Soviets try and clear it. Chelios unable to hold it in. Now a long lead pass, but the play is offside. Swetlov, number 14, putting the play offside at the... USA blue line and you can expect the Soviets to do that they're gonna try and float a man up high and wide there's a big ice surface here and when they get in a situation where they've got control of their puck right away they have a man break way out all alone trying to hit him with a long pass so he can get a breakaway from the face off number 22 Hurst for the United States fires it in Jim I have trying to clear it now the United States seal it a chance oh LaFontaine just missed giving the United States the lead. Team USA center it. First set the point. Trying to get it in front. Knocked away by Mazakov. Intercepting there is David A. Jensen for the United States. It's kicked back off the center by the Soviets. And LaFontaine, number 16, who just missed, centers this one out. Old Jack fan on it. And back come the Soviets. Svetlov moving in with Golikov. Svetlov behind the net. Drops it back. Chance for Golikov. Now they drop it to the point. And the shot goes wide by Martimianov. And comes back to the Soviet blue line. This is number five. Sergei Gorbushev. Not at the center. Picked up there by Barnikov. Now breaking in on the right side is Sturdyak, number seven. Couldn't center it. Corey Millen kicks it loose back to the net. And now Mark Fusco tried to move it out for the United States. Okay. And the puck is held for a face-off. Face-off coming up to the left of the United States goal. Gary Sampson taking the face-off for Team USA. And wins the draw. Back of the net is Bob Brook. Brook number 13, clearing it to Sampson. Now shot down into the Soviet zone, and the goaltender, Kiesnick, took no chance at all. Well, he had Corey Millen bearing right down on him. Millen drafted by the Rangers in the third round a year ago, playing at the University of Minnesota. is very quick. And he saw him coming down on him, so he wasn't about to give that puck off to the defenseman because it might have been mishandled. Could have set it up an opportunity for the USA. Mellon, Verkota, and Sampson, the forward line for the United States. Brook and Mark Fusco on defense. Mellon will take the draw here against Krolikov. Soviets get it and wind it around in the boards to Minchinkov. And he shoots it to center. Step to out up to the line. Broken up. Mark Fusco drops it to Sampson. Over to Brook, number 13. And center to Millen, and it's whistled down on a two-line offside pass. 
Well, there's a fellow that came to training camp on Herald, that Gary Sampson came to the camp in Colorado Springs and made this hockey club. His father was a backup goalkeeper in 1956. He's from that ice box in the United States as his goaltender Bob Mason, International Falls, Minnesota. He's one of the free agents on this hockey team. From the faceoff, number 28, David H. Jensen. Cleared it back of the net and now Team USA working on the left side. Bosco cleared it near center ice. The Soviets have it and firing it back in was Biakov. Number 28 again is David H. Jensen. Got it into the center ice area. Now cleared ahead to Scott Fusco, who was knocked down. And the play anyway was offside at the Soviets' blue line. A 2-2 game. Well, you see Scott Fusco getting up, and he just got knocked over the blue line by Biak, and a good play by Biak, and to force the offside. This young man was uh, an outstanding hockey player in Harvard last year. He's got a couple years to go, the brother of Mark Fusco. Drafted originally by New Jersey, then his rights were traded to Hartford. Looks like he just got hit with a stick on the side and going to get that mask off as Dr. Nagabaz is taking a look at him there. From the faceoff, Harim trying to shoot it in, broken up by Chelios. And Thomas has the puck. He lost it. Soviets on the attack once more. Working it in is Harim into the corner, but Tim Thomas, number 20, broke it up. They work it at center ice to Costello. Play broken up and the Soviets start back. Long right wing pass for Harim. He drops it back. And a chance for Zeban who fell now. Team USA on the attack. Costello to Thomas. Broken up and right back comes Odinsa. Now a drop pass. A shot. Bear him to save on the close in try. And back comes Team USA. Here's the youngster, Olchek, again. Centers it to Gay in front. Gay shoots and a pad save by Diesnick. Good chance there for the United States. Centering pass off the skate of a man. Now Jensen moving in. Centered it and it's knocked away by the Soviet defense. Centered out again. Dropped back to the point and Rook couldn't hold it in. Team USA circling to get their team back on side, and David A. Jensen works it in on left wing to Olchek. Trying to drop it back for Mark Fusco. Mark Fusco tied up as now Brook comes over, and we get a stop. Oh, with just one of them back there, if the four doesn't pick up that position, they could catch themselves in trouble. And that faceoff right there, Stepanichev was all alone, a whole zone behind everyone. Let's see how Aya Frady and Gary Haight make up there on defense now. Here's Al Aya Frady trying to clear it on the board. Knocked down and held in by Mazakov for the Soviets. Now to Kim Aya. He got it into the corner. Haight shooting it around onto the boards onto this side. And Steve Griffith got it outside the line. The Soviets come back into the play. Whistle down on an offside. There's Wazikov, one of the outstanding young players on this team. As a matter of fact, when you talk to their coach and say, who's the best defenseman? He says it's between Gimeyev and Wazikov. And Wazikov here is a lot younger. Gimeyev has played eight years with Soviet national teams and touring teams. But this fellow looks like he's a good candidate for the Olympic team. Wazikov, 24 years of age. Gimeyev, as Lou mentioned, has been around much longer. He's 28. He's Again, it is the Millen, Sampson, and Vercota line for Team USA. First and Kelly on defense. A 2 2 game. Soviets work it to Gorbusha. Knocked back in by the United States. Soviets clear it right in front of their own goal. But it worked, and here they come to center ice. There is a shot by Barnikov wide of the net. Held in a shot from the point by Primyanov is blocked. And here's Makota for Team USA. Drops it to Millen. Millen trying to make a play. Centered it. Now Chelios fell down. And breaking out is Varnikov. And across the line, the Soviets with a chance. There in the save on Varnikov's backhander. And all developed when Chelios had the misfortune to fall down on the play. 
jam up on the boards of the far still going at it very hard as they did earlier and both clubs taking some chances which surprises me but there is no overtime we better point that out right now if it ends in a tie the game's over we don't have overtime here is Tepta moving in across the line a setup pass for Priyakin he drops it back to the point that shot blocked by Brooke oh Kumpel drops it back in behind the goal and taking over is Mark Fusco the Buke stack he got it to center ice. The Soviets take over there. Priyakin, a head on right wing for Priyakin. Centering pass, and there to knock it away was Mark Fusco. Buck in the corner, and back comes Team USA. Number 25 is Kumpel. Couldn't get it into the zone. A 2-2 game. Raleigh Cobb passing to Minson Cobb. Bob Brook was there to clear it away. And Brook, the draft choice of the St. Louis Blues a few years ago, clears it down the ice. No icing as the United States player got to it first. Rich Costello in the corner. Got it back of the net, but the Soviets clear it. Good play by Jensen to knock it down, but they rule it came outside the blue line, and it's called on an offside. That's David H. Jensen, a draft choice of... Yours, Lou Nanny. That's right. He was at Minnesota, played for four years as captain of the University of Minnesota team last year. He was the highest plus player on the team. A very solid defensive defenseman. Not a spectacular type defenseman. Doesn't rush with the puck often. Sees back and watches the store, as they say. Number 20, Tim Thomas out on the ice now for Team USA. <laughs> You're familiar with him. Well, uh, he comes from a hockey family. His father coaches at Richfield High School, and more than that, his mother's my secretary. So <laughs> you can see he's inbred quite a bit. Here is Thomas, number 20. Couldn't get around the defenseman. And back comes Wapitsa. Shot it in. And as Garrett, the six cities that these teams are going to be hitting, and people in those areas, check the newspapers to see wh when they're coming, what time the games are, because you're going to have a great thrill watching these clubs play. We're in Lake Placid, New York tonight. The first game of the Soviets' tour. Here's a quick shot by... Old check that's high off the glass. Kelly else for the drive. And he screams that one wide of the net. Back comes Harim. He's checked in the play by number 22, Tom Hirsch. Hirsch over on right wing. Passing it to Old check Now in across the line to David A. Jensen. He's knocked down and then the Soviets break up ice. Zeeben moving in. Sliding across was Tom Hirsch to break it up. Fine play by the University of Minnesota player, Hurst. Now the United States try and move in. Chelios got it into the zone. Soviets right back to get it. Cleared to center ice. Goalie cop, number 19, moving in. And Barron, as the puck slid into the crease, was able to... There you see the smallest man on the U.S. team, Corey Millinet. 5'7", 155. United States got the face off, and this is Bob Brook. Passing it over on the wing to Mark Fusco, who shot it to center. Soviets back in their zone, failed to clear the first time. And now they rink wide it over to Minchinkov. Long lead pass ahead for the Soviet player. Couldn't get around the defense. Good player there. Or good play by Mark Fusco, but he's going to get a high sticking penalty. And that will give the Soviets a big opportunity. Well, Fusco made a fine play coming across to save that pass, but then as he fought the Russian off the puck, you see him kicking skates out. They're giving him a high stick penalty because he hit him with the stick in the chin. And the Soviet Union going on a power play in a really a tremendously fast-paced hockey game here tonight. The USA, even though they're a young team, has been able to use their biggest asset, that being their speed, to keep the gap between them and the opposition closed at all times, not giving the Soviet Union an opportunity to freelance with that puck. Well, you see Lou Vero, the U.S. coach, his team short-handed. High sticking penalty to Mark Fusco. So the Soviets with a chance on the power play as they work it free. Or Bushin at the point, held it in, but it is intercepted and shot down the ice by Tom Hurst. Now killing off the penalty are Kota and Sampson. 
First and Chelios on defense. This is Kovin for the Soviets. Chelios poked it off the stick. And then Burkota cleared up the center ice. Gorbushin over on the right side to Barnakov. Barnakov number 18 check, but Skurdiak is there. Back to Gorbushin. To Skurdiak. Viktor Skurdiak, number seven, to Gorbushin. Gorbushin gets it again. Centered it out in front. Drop pass back. Now they drop it to the other point. Martinez shoots one, and that's the flex wide. Soviet Skurdiak with power. And pressure on this power play, and intercepting it is Tom Hurst, who cleared it away. Yes, Dan, he's playing quite a game out there tonight. Second round draft choice by Minnesota a couple years ago. Has really developed the game of defense. He used to roam a little too much in college, but this Olympic experience has really been very beneficial to him as a hockey player. Another paid political announcement on behalf of the North <laughs> Stars there, right? Well, we might as well say that he has been drafted. We've said everyone else. But the Soviet Union has had actually no opportunities. We look at Ilya Biak and one of the young defensemen in this hockey club to score, and they've had five power play chances. They're not shooting the puck. The USA team is doing an outstanding job of containing them, allowing them to pass the puck on the outside, but not getting any shots through to the net or even in position to get some shots. They're keeping a very tight box, as we say. Let them pass the puck around the outside, but not allow them to get any shots from that slot area or any deflections in front. By the way, there's shots on goal for the first two periods. Favor the United States, 17 to 15. Here's a clearing play by Scott Bukestad. Down the ice it goes. Now Biaka clearing it in. Digging in after it is Gimayev. Shot it around into the corner to Prolikov, number nine. Here's Prolikov, Alexis Prolikov, into the other corner. Now back on the point, Minchenko. Over onto the far side to Shepka. Put in center. Tied up on the play by David H. Jensen. And now the United States cleared out of there once more as the penalty expires to Mark Fusco. Back to get it from Chinka. Just over nine minutes left, a 2-2 game. Speeding out is Kipka. Number 16. Brook ties him up on the play, and Barron then grabs the puck as hate and you know what are their chances i guess the most positive thing you could say is this team allows you to dream again they've got such great talents you could see that if everything breaks right they'll have a chance to win a medal maybe even the gold medal they're an outstanding group of young men and superbly talented a 2-2 game this game is up for grabs with less than nine minutes to play here is brooke for the united states and then it is cleared down the ice by the U.S., and that will constitute an icing infraction. And the face-off comes back into the zone of the United States, off to the right of the goaltender, Mark Vera. We were just joined by one of the great college coaches in the United States, and Ned Harkness, he was interviewed uh, and introduced before the game. Nice to have you here in that great game, isn't it? Face-off coming up to the right of the United States goal, a 2-2 game. On the face-off, being tossed out of there is Odinsov. And stepping in is Svetla. He gets the draw back to the point. And the shot by Matitsin is wide. Now another shot from a near point, wide of the target. United States clearing one, and it's clear. Now the young line of LaFontaine, Old Jack, and also David A. Jensen on the ice. Bozikov clearing it. It's shot in by Golikov. Back is first to get it. First behind the net. Clearing it, it went off Old Jack skate. Soviets hold it in. Controlling it is Golikov. Back to the point, a drive, and off the glass was Bosnikov shot. Now coming in here in the third period. Big face-off coming up. Won by the United States as LaFontaine got the draw, and then it's cleared to center. Gimayev got it over onto the wing. Take him there. And broken up by Jensen. He shot at the center. Gimaya losing it, and here's Olchak. Upended on the play. Soviets come back. Gimaya, number three. 
Big lanky defenseman. Works it across the line. Barnikoff shooting it out. Six save by Barron and the rebound cleared away by Chris Chelios. Chelios number 21. Long pass up the middle. LaFontaine in to get it. Drops it back, but the play is called on. Uh, the more experienced players on the team as we look at Coivin, and they've been out there for the majority of the last five or eight minutes. Now Millen, Verkota, and Sampson, the United States forward line. Sturdyuk into the corner. Broken up, and the United States come back to buy a Brady, clearing it in. Digging in is Phil Verkota. Verkota number eight. Back of the net, but intercepting it is Kobe, number 10. Shot to center. Knocked down there by Aya Frady. He's checked to the Soviets on the attack now. Centering pass. Knocked away by David H. Jensen. A big play there by David H. Jensen on the U.S. defense. Skirdia. Now it's centered out in front. Kovian dropping it back now to the other point. And a dive by Gary Sampson to block the shot. Under seven minutes left in the third period, a 2-2 game. Another shot blocked, and still another one. This one by Mark Fusco. And now Fusco clears to center. Racing after it is brother Scott Fusco, but the Soviets come right back. Kobe moving it in to Stipta. Shot there on the save, rebound. And he had to clear that away as it hit Bukestad and bounced right back into the goal crease. Now number nine, Scott Fusco to Bukestad at center. Scott Bukestad fell on the play. Bukestad gets it back again. Out in front, shooting! Blocked at the defense, and then he's declared it away. A big chance there for the Saints. Another one. Bukestad shoots. He scores! What an Persistence up. pays off for Scott Bukestad. And the whole bench has emptied, Dan, with 5.38 to go. A great effort by Bukestad getting his own rebound. The USA was putting on tremendous pressure. And Tiznik made a fine save on the initial shot by Bukestad, a backhand shot. And he lifted the second one up and over that goaltender. An outstanding shot as he's falling down. You'll see Bukestad in front. That's him all alone. He gets the first shot away. And he takes his backhander. He's getting hooked down up and over the goaltender to put the USA in front 3-2 to two with 5.38 to go. Lou Darrell told us before the game that Bukestad's been absent because of a knee problem and they really need him for a scoring punch. Well, he was only one goal to put the USA ahead 3-2. to two. And a standing room only crowd is excited in Lake Placid, New York. 3-2, to two, the United States leading. Now the Soviets on the attack. Moving it in. Adinsop is tied up from the play by Chelio. Adinsop now knocked down on the play, but the Soviets have it at their own line and clear at the center ice. Paul Gay into Chelio. Chelio into a bad angle, centered. There's a chance. A shot. They score! <laughs> on the rebound. Chelio's getting Tim Thomas's rebound. Chelio's made. A fine play coming around the outside. He gets an opportunity to score. He stopped. Tim Thomas comes in. He takes a shot. He stopped. It looked like he had a wide open net. A great save by Teasnake. But that man, 21, Chris Chelios out of San Diego, University of Wisconsin. Stopped right there. Look at this shot by Thomas. Looks like he had the old open net. And then Chelios pounces on that rebound to put it away and give the USA a two-goal lead. Here's a good play by Chelios. A backhand shot, a save. Look at Tim Thomas. He looks, he looks to put it in the upper corner, but he couldn't make it. But Thomas. Now, the Soviets on the attack. They come right back, center one, but stationed perfectly was David A. Jensen to clear it to center. Now, Sputlock. Number 14. Sergei Svetlov dropping it back to Minchinkov. Now, head manning it at center. They work it in and upended with Svetlov on the play. Ally of Frady, number 18, has it for the United States. 
clear to center ice. Broken up by Gimaya. Long pass on right wing to Swatlock. He leaves it there. A chance they shoot, they score! Stefan Eschab left open on the right side. Cuts the U.S. lead to four to three. And Stefan Eschab coming around the outside, picked up a loose puck. He's on the right wing, he's a left-hand shot, so he had an angle of about six feet better than he would have had. You see him right here. He's on his forehand and hit the far corner with a low shot to beat Barron. Cut the margin to one with 421 to go. Stefanichev making a fine shot on the far side, just inside the pipe, scoring for the Soviet so Union. So a 4-3 lead now for the United States. Soviets on the attack. Barnikov couldn't hold it in. The United States clear it down the ice. They're trying to protect a one-goal lead now. Four minutes remaining in the third period. 4-3, the USA. Here is Kobe. Shooting it in across the line. Now, Verbushin trying to center one. Knocked away on a diving play by Corey Millen. Now, Brooke hammers into the boards and takes Colvin out of the play. And we got to stop. Brooklyn, New York now lives in Spring Valley Lake, Colorado. And he's in a nail biter here. A 4 3 USA lead. Chris Chelios. They scored that last goal for the United States, cleared it down the ice. Soviet. Ryakin. Now flipping it near the line. Humple is there to knock it down for the United States. The USA. Work a lead pass to Kumpel. Number 25. Centered it. Sprawling save by Pieznik. The save, another goal for... Scott Fusco right in front. A great save by Pieznik. Here are the United States once again, but the Soviets take over. Swetlop, now they work it on right wing. Stepinushev is shot, and the U.S. shoot it back in. Gimayev, number three. Clearing one. Picked up by Golikov, number 19. Now ahead to Stepinushev. Centered it out in front, a chance here. Drive from the point is off the glass. Butlov into the corner. Taken out of the play. And the United States try and clear the zone and do. Shooting at the center ice was Gary Hake. Right back from the Soviets. Stepanischev shot is blocked in front of the net by David H. Jensen. And again, the U.S. clear up the center. Here's David A. Jensen, number seven. Trying to speed around the defense. Centered one. And it's cleared away by Tiznik. Brook, number 13, has it for the United States. To Mark Fusco. Off the boards to the Soviet line. Less than two minutes to play. Jensen trying to center one to LaFontaine. Broken up in Guinea. Feeds it on the left side for Colvin. Colvin, number 10. Back on the point. Centering pass, a shot. Another shot, they score! The Soviets with 139 have just tied this game up. And I believe it was Barnikov who got his own rebound. He made his first shot on Barron. The save was made, Barron was holding his position. You'll see the shot come from the point. Right there, Koivin takes the first shot. Or it is Barnikov, he takes the first shot, then the second shot is put in. Now, Kyle Varnikov is the captain of the Soviet team. He's number 18. He got his own rebound right there as it came out from Barron. Barron, as he was going down, left just a little room between his legs. And a lucky shot by Varnikov was right between his legs to tie it up. 139 to play in this game. 4-4. Four, four. Vazniakov will also get the assist on that. He took the shot from the blue line initially to set that play up. Face off. Chelios flipping it down into the Soviet zone. Gorbushin back to get it. Now it's clear, but Chelios controls for the United States. The number 22 hurts. Back to Chelios. Lead pass to Verkota. In the clear. He scores! <laughs>
What a great play, starting initially back in the USA zone. First giving a long lead pass to Sampson, up to Verkota. Look at Verkota come in, he uses his body to get in front of that defenseman, then beats Teasdick on the far side. There's the long pass from Hirsch, up the wing to Verkota. He cuts to the middle, get a good shooting angle, then he just beats him on the far side with 118 to go and put the USA ahead by at the four. A great play by Captain Phil Verkota, former member of the 1980 U.S. gold medal winning team here, now putting him up ahead with a minute and 18 to go. The Soviet captain Varnikov had tied it. The U.S. captain Verkota gives the United States the lead. Once again, we still have 118 remaining. Five to four in favor of the United States. This crowd is just going wild. Bill Verkota. The University of Minnesota and a member of a 1980 gold medal team has just given the state's delay. The USA leading 5-4. to four. Just over a minute to play. There'll be no overtime if this game is tied, by the way. Jim Iyab now working it in for the Soviets. Jim Iyab, centered one. It was wide of the target. Into the other corner. They work it back to the net. Svetlov, number 14, trying to get it free. Does to Jim Iyab. Dropping it back to the point to Vazakov. A drive! And now a jam up on the boards. And a stoppage in play with 37 seconds left in this game. And Dan, you'll notice the Soviet team hasn't pulled their goaltender. They didn't do it here in 1980. They don't usually pull their goaltender. I'm very surprised at it. You'll see a great save by Barron keeping it even. And the Soviets are playing out there just even strength. A good save by Barron. The puck going to the right, getting frozen. Five to four, the United States lead. Goldbein. Ready on a face-off in the U.S. zone. We'll take the draw against Jim Thomas. On the draw, it was Sampson who took the draw and won it cleanly. Clear down the ice, Costello races after it, but Finchkenkopf gets back. Firing it over onto the wing, breaking in Paul Gay. Circling back is Kobe. Now for Boucher. With 18 seconds left, the United States into Portek to try and pen the Russians up, but they can't. Back comes Kobe. Knocked down at center ice, and Hurst clears it away. Seven seconds left. Circling. Sturdy up. Long shot. The game is over. And the United States with a 5-4 victory over the Soviet select. New York. This building really seems to be the home of the United States hockey team. They come up with a great performance here again tonight. A fabulous hockey game. Tremendous pace all night long. Outstanding opportunities by both clubs. But this young United States hockey club came through with a better effort than the other team by far. The final score. The United States 5. The Soviet selects 4. Each team will be awarded Soviet life prizes. The prizes were instituted by the editorial board of the Illustrated Monthly Magazine specifically for traditional Soviet-American sport events.